Welcome to the Do It All Dad Year podcast, dad-friendly entertainment for you and me. I'm your host, Michael Kornbluth, and this is episode 71. My age of innocence is dead. (laughs) KP is gone, and what remained of my heart for the Knicks is not coming back. I'm a 42-year-old Nick fan, been a lifer for two decades and counting. After watching what ESPN has descended to, propping up fake news intellectuals like Fake News Pro, or watching CNN disgrace itself by becoming lead leak liar-in-chief, your opinions, news media as a whole, on what's best means less than Michael Rappaport. Can I get a holla for some holla? All NBA talking head pundits are idiots for defending the Knicks' decision to dump KP because his brother agents rubbed the Knicks' front office the wrong way, coming off too much like the Russian gangsters in 25th hour. (laughs) KP is... Dirk Nowitzki and Ralph Sampson on M D M M A morons. How did the Knicks become Coach Fizdale's team? What are his major turnaround success stories under his belt again? Getting out of LeBron's way after plowing through Eric Spolstra on the sidelines in Miami doesn't count. <laughs> P.T. Barnum is rolling in his grave, knowing Dolan gave away his magical Latvian unicorn with a million-dollar high-voltage smile to a billionaire nerd who refuses to splurge on a good hairstylist for peanuts on the dollar. Stephen A. Smith. This is Stephen A. Smith off the record on the KP trade. It doesn't take much to be a Latvian legend. At least Melo won a national championship at Syracuse. What did Hello Uni ever win? Besides white nationalist hearts cloaked in Armani ties at the Garden. Can I get a holla for some holla? Trading KP for cap space is a joke. It's like Ari Gold replacing Vincent Chase on Aquaman with Chad Lowe because he has to pay for all of Turtle's broken glass bongs using Fuji water only in their own stretch trailer on the Warner lot (laughs) out-of-pocket. KP made it clear he didn't want to stay. That doesn't take the sting out of getting nothing for him in return. The Knicks had leverage. Why bother reporting about using him as trade bait for Unibrow at all? God forbid Stephen A. Pine for what could have been. And that's why I am going to get rid of my son's KP jersey because the idea of it on my son depresses me knowing what the Knicks could have been. And it's also going to depress me because I'm going to see whatever remains of my heart for the Knicks being completely exterminated to pieces. <laughs> So, congratulations, Knicks. You've lost a lifetime Nick fan forever. And you were my first love. So, you really had to treat me like garbage and completely disrespect me and completely take me for granted uh, to finally kick me out of your life for good. With KP gone, Manhattan is yesterday's news. <laughs> I don't know what's more infuriating. Some hack writer from Deadspin writing about New Yorkers' delusions of grandeur or Mark Cuban robbing us of our Latvian odyssey in the making at the first ice roadblock bath ahead. (laughs) I know at times I'm sounding a tattoo poetic dramatic for... 
a blockbuster NBA trade. But like I said, the Knicks are my first love, and I had visions of taking my children down to Broadway because I truly believe that KP aligned with someone like Pipe Cleaner Arm Durant um, had the potential to finally break our championship drought, bring a championship in my lifetime, and have my kids to be able to enjoy the Knicks, my first true love, and have my kids be able to see KP hoist the NBA trophy on a float hanging down the candy of heroes, which I've seen for the Yankees and the Giants, and, and now it's never going to happen. <laughs> you had a chance. You had the unicorn from Latvia in your lap, James Dolan, and you blew it! When can I start blaming de Blasio for New York City's losing culture? NYPD, NYPD turned their backs on garlic breath. It was just a matter of time before a Trump-supporting uni did the same. Can I get a holla for some holla? Thank you, James Dolan. My hollas are now completely heartless because you ripped it out of me completely. Doing... Your best <laughs> Indiana Jones Temple of Doom impersonation. Apparently you have some talent after all. Fake news friends from high school still thinking they're smarter than Trump for predicting Hillary Hammer Time Tankles would win. KP gone to Dallas. Louie sticking to his out of control jerk off material uh, around here, I'm yucking up every comedy club south of Housing Street. Time to abort my family of five down south now. <laughs> Immediately. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, Bill de Blasio's current wife, she's a African American, and uh, when they met, she was a 100% Park Slope coffee shop lesbo yet we're supposed to believe that garlic breath converted her <laughs> can you really also last time i checked bill de blasio big bird himself last time i checked bill de blasio ate pizza with a fork and knife so can you really picture de blasio burying his face into that bean pie with such sloppy reckless abandon can i get a holla for some holla, holla, holla. I still love that joke. So, from a Gen X perspective, KP was Adonis Creed, our own trans. Amazon woman on the moon who identified himself as the alpha uni among the sly, self-stylized, gunner, slasher, new order. Now we're left with anime porn on Tumblr for money shot creation. <laughs> as depressing as that sounds. You know, I've talked a lot about it. Uh, age of innocence in my life. I still listen to hair metal power ballads all the time. And it's not as if, if I'm honest with myself, like what is it about my age of innocence that I find so attractive? I still have a very distinct memory of when we lost, when the Knicks lost to Houston. And I had all these cut out like newspaper clippings of the Knicks, right? The New York Post. I always read the Post. Daily News always sucked. The writing always blew. And in comparison. It was never as witty or as sharp. And the New York Post, for those who don't know, is the oldest newspaper in New York. Alexander Hamilton uh, founded actually. And I remember there was that one infamous picture of John Starks. They called it the dunk. Where he looked like a perpetually rising like Jack in the Box. And he dug up a Jordan uh, against the Bulls. I had that poster. I had that clipping. And then when we lost to Houston, I remember tearing everything down. Uh, that was a really brutal moment. So the question is, so why am I so enamored with my age of innocence? 
Well, my age of innocence was pre-9-11. It was before magic made HIV disappear. <laughs> it was before we started calling a native New Yorker who became president of the United States who was working for free a Nazi. <laughs> And it was also before Judd Apatow became synonymous with, you know, A-list, you know, movie comedy magic. <laughs> and it was before Trevor Noah was able to get a lifetime contract at Comedy Central for the foreseeable future. <laughs> so it makes sense for why I would long or pine for simpler times, but it's not as if I was, you know, knee-deep in, uh, in Puntang. It's not as if I was this standout athlete. I had friends. We had some nice moments. Senior year was the best. Senior year was by far the best. Came out of my shell. My nickname was But Man, But Man! But Man! This is sing. Nickname songs in our pre cocktails in here, in my honor. But man, but man! So that was nice. I won a, an award called uh, Grooviest. That award had never existed before. I like to think deep down. I don't know where this ego came from. thing is, I had no ego until... And I wouldn't really say that I had much of an ego yet. But I went to Israel... For a summer, I went with these Masada teen tours. I hooked up with a couple of Israelis. Finally got that monkey off my back. Because my younger brother had wreaked havoc on my ego prior. It wasn't his fault. But he had reached puberty before I did. I was the last person to enter the puberty party. And on top of that, you know, he also lost his virginity before I did. I didn't lose my virginity until college. And he lost his virginity in junior high. And not only that, to make matters worse, to add insult to injury, he had banged the three hottest girls in his class that I tried to jerk off to at the time but couldn't, <laughs> which made me feel like a total big brother bus. In essence, back in the day, I felt like Eddie Curry on the Knicks with the shittier hook shot. <laughs> Can I get a holla for some holla? Drinking a Pabst Blue Ribbon, but so good not drinking. I was going to get this IPA Road to Ruin. It was like $18. I'm like, no, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I remember getting six packs of Samuel Adams for, for seven. And it wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was a long time ago. But it wasn't that long ago. It doesn't feel that long ago. Do you want to know how long ago it was? I was able to get a six pack of Samuel Adams for six ninety nine at Walgreens at Lake Force, at a war, which is one of the most exclusive expensive suburbs like in the country. It's where John Hughes, that's where his like mansion estate was. I went to college there for a couple of years. I'm white privilege personified, I know, I get it. And yeah, and that was 95. So again, it's a long time ago. <laughs> it's not as old as the advent of Yiddish, but for all you Millennium Musketeers, I can see how you're thinking, eh, you're pretty old, dude. <laughs> Pete Davidson's the future of comedy, man. <laughs> so. Yeah, like, at this point, I hope MSG just, like, goes out of business altogether. <laughs> I mean, like, Dane Cook yucked it up already. And I liked it. I liked Dane Cook from back in the day. His first comment was great. But, yeah, I mean, trading a once-in-a-lifetime mythological talent like KP for cap space and draft picks for the potential of, like, securing, you know, the most, like, malign millennial NBA stars of this current generation, that being Kyrie Irving and... Kevin Durant is about as uninspiring as it gets. Can I get a holler? James L. Brooks. <laughs> so, my age of innocence. And, you know, there was Ari, there was Clark, Phil. You know, Adita was funny. He had his moments. And, you know, Kaim and I had some really good times. You know, Jesse, things weren't, you know, tense between us back then. You know, Jones, Cousin, Jared. You know, we also go to, we'd all go to North Avenue together. Uh, there were these bars in uh, New Rochelle. And I remember we got our first fake IDs in Times Square. 
I had an uh, idea was American University. I, they let us in. The cab station was like right across the street. And uh, and then some kids got into a, a DUI accident and they killed somebody and you know, that ended the party right there. But we had a great time on North Avenue. Pretty sure I had my first hookup there, actually, uh, with the girl from East Chester, which is really hot. Pretty sure she was Italian. I don't remember if that was before Israel or not. I think it was after because I remember that kiss being way less uh, wet drenchy <laughs> because I had no idea what I was doing for my first French kiss. My first French kiss, I'd say after 10 minutes, her face resembled a wet mop. <laughs> yeah. So that's how that worked out. But the worst part about trading KP is lack of faith in uni flying high again. And David Fisdale, coach of Knicks, still thinks Black Lives Matter is a great idea. So how smart can he be? Belittling uh, European bigs has become his claim to fame. My age of innocence, as stated before at the beginning of this podcast, is 100% officially dead. <laughs> I tried getting a better off dead on uh, Amazon, I said, I asked for Better Off Dead. It wasn't in the library, which pissed me off because I, I wanted to show my kids that movie. And I remember it being a John Hughes film. Oh, that's right. Because this week I had a piece published on the Good Man Project called What Gen X Parents Understand. And I wanted to pay homage to John Hughes. And I wanted my, son, my children to see the power of booger. And he says, this is pure snow. <laughs> but we'll have to, we'll have to wait for, uh, for that, uh, magic move, magic moment in movie making history. But seriously, today folks, I feel ridiculous. And I'm not even exaggerating here. I feel ridiculous. Like a 42 year old. I can't even say his name. I feel ridiculous. Like the 42 year, I feel like a 42 year old collagenol from Bronx Tale in my Knicks hoodie. <laughs> After Sonny tells him Mickey Mantle doesn't pay his dad's rent. <laughs> so why care about Mick's latest stat line in the New York Post? Can't regain my loving feeling for my beloved old school cherished Knicks. It's going, going, gone. <laughs> I don't think I could be any more melodramatic today if I tried. So this is me talking to my daughter this morning. Daughter says, you love the Knicks more than me. <laughs> and I said, Matilda, they were my first love. An arranged marriage my dad forced on me. Now I'll never have a rank to show for it. In this towering ice world of commerce and street ball courts, KP was our last hope. <laughs> if KP wins an NBA championship for the Dallas Mavericks, he could run for president, and Mark Cuban could be his VP. The FBI can forge his birth certificate and make it look less like a futz with PDF file this time around. <laughs> because millennials won't be fooled again! Can I get a holla? For some holla! Nothing like an A-list joke to revitalize my spirits as I make fun of Barack Obama once again. Unbelievable. I can't believe the Knicks traded KP for anyone but Anthony Davis. I'm seriously considering divorcing my wife to get a talk radio job in Dallas because KP is what remains of my love for the Knicks. And it's really hard to let uni fly away this is the do it all dad year podcast dad friendly entertainment for you and me i just did 20 minutes on kp ripping the heart out of my precious age of innocence longing aura <laughs> have a wonderful weekend nick nation or whatever it remains of you <laughs> and i'll talk to you guys soon